It's been almost four years since Sony released the PlayStation Classic. I mean, it came right off the back of Nintendo's success with the NES and Super Nintendo Classic editions. It, it seemed like it was a no-brainer, right? I mean, the PS1 is the sixth best-selling console of all time, with over 102 million consoles sold worldwide. I loved the idea when it was first announced that Sony was making a mini emulation console, one of my favorite systems of all time. That helped, right? Now, there were problems, though. The price was a little high at $100. And when the complete game list was revealed, people were a bit mixed. I mean, the game list had some excellent titles. Don't get me wrong. I do feel like the Japanese game list, in my opinion, seemed a, a little bit better. We didn't initially have a lot to go on, as when they first announced it, they only showcased five of the 20 games in the beginning. But once we learned all of the titles... There were criticisms that we were missing a lot of stuff people would have hoped for and were considered PlayStation classics. No Spyro, no Crash Bandicoot, no Castlevania Symphony of the Night, no Gran Turismo, no Tony Hawk. I mean, I get it. We can't have everything we'd hoped for. This is not as easy as Sony, you know, just saying, hey, we want this game on the system. There's licensing involved, royalties, and, you know, probably tons of other things that companies would have to agree to. And maybe some of these companies just didn't want their games on the system for one reason or another. I mean, some of them want to sell compilations or repackage, you know, whatever. There's tons of reasons why certain games won't ever be released this way, right? Now, I think one of the biggest problems, though, was with this game list was about half of the games were released as the PAL versions, which ran at 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz. This appeared to be laziness, my opinion. Maybe some of you guys shared the same opinion. Especially, you know, with it being launched in North America this way, where no one would expect these versions of the games to be on the system. I mean, I suppose one thought would be that the PAL versions of the games would, you know, they'd support more languages, so that'd be a little easier to, you know, have more accessibility. But, I mean, the problem was that they ran slower than the North American versions that we we're accustomed to. So, of course, that was a big problem. Another complaint I remember being brought up at the time was how the system released with the original controllers and not like the DualShock versions with analog sticks. Now I think the original non-analog stick controllers are great and I don't really remember it bothering me too much but I definitely get it. You know some of the included games could benefit from having analog sticks right? So this thing released holiday time of 2018 and it didn't sell as well as perhaps Sony had hoped in the US. It did a bit better in Japan I believe. But retailers, they started having sales within weeks of this thing launching. I remember at one point finding them at Best Buy for $20. That was crazy. Now, with all the criticisms of the console, I still consider it to be one of the best mini consoles ever released. But just not in its stock form. Of course, most of us were waiting for a hack, and we eventually got a few options around, you know, release of this thing. My favorite was AutoBleam, and still is. It's amazing. Even after having been out for almost four years now, the PlayStation Classic, Auto, the AutoBleam team still continues to improve the software for the system. AutoBleam allows tons of customizations to the system, add PlayStation games, Dreamcast, NES, Super Nintendo, Arcade, Turbo Graphics, Genesis, Open Board, tons of different apps. You got a highly customizable user interface. It's pretty slick. Now, recently, a new version of AutoBleam was released, version 1.0. This is very recent. So this new version added in better game controller compatibility, support for CHD game files, some bug fixes, and a light game parameter in the edit game menu. This will make a, a game select screen for just light gun games if you have a compatible light gun that can be used this way. So that's kind of nice. So the software allows you to use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and OTG USB support by installing the AutoBleam kernel. I use OTG to have my USB drive and power cable plugged into the back of the system instead of using USB hubs or using the controller port, Player 2 controller port for the drive. Uh, most of the time I stick with the original controllers that came with the system, but occasionally I do use Bluetooth to, you know, set up a wireless PlayStation controller when I want to have analog sticks and not be tethered too closely to the system but I do still like the wired controllers that came with it. Now, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, messing around with the PlayStation Classic. 
I mostly use it for PS1 games, but it's cool having stuff like the widescreen 60 FPS Mario 64 port running on the system. Like I'm still just shocked to this day that that runs so great on the PlayStation Classic. It runs better than the uh, Switch version that came out with the uh, Mario 35th anniversary. Like, holy crap, it's, it's, it's awesome playing the game on here. Now I almost have a couple hundred PS1 games on my setup, but also um, I got a small build from Magnus RC to check out, which is what I've been showing in the footage in this video. Uh, he's done a few builds over the uh, you know past few years that I've really enjoyed, and typically when I get a build from him, I'll transfer over my selection of PS1 games to you know his setup to have what I want, and then you know a neat little selection of his curated game list for all the. Uh, other retro stuff. I mean, he includes some interesting ROM hacks and, you know, newer games in the retro game selection. So it's really cool to mess with that stuff. I definitely recommend checking out Magnus RC's YouTube channel. Link will be down below if you want to go peep it out. He's constantly testing out new things with the PlayStation Classic and AutoBleam on his channel, amongst other cool stuff as well. So highly recommend checking him out. He also hangs around my Facebook group and Discord a little bit. So Sometimes we get, you know, heads up on things that are going on with the PlayStation Classic and, you know, Auto Bleam software a little early, so that's kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, I really love the PlayStation Classic, and I just wanted to do this little video kind of revisiting it a bit. You know, it had a lot of early criticisms, but despite all that, it still has a lot of fans and support, especially in the hacking scene, obviously. It's one of my favorite mini consoles, and... Also a prime example of the community fixing and just overall bettering a product to a level that far exceeds what the manufacturer had in mind. I mean, Sony kind of screwed it up with this one, but the community fixed it. I don't know if Sony will ever revisit making a classic mini console. I mean, I'm sure plenty would love to have a mini PS2. I mean, I know I would, but if they ever do attempt to make another one, I hope they learn their lessons from this first release. It's an awesome system, just they made some mistakes. It would be cool to see a new version come out eventually. I still love all the mini classic edition consoles. Sega Genesis Mini 2 was just announced for the US if you haven't checked that video out. I just did one the other day, looking forward to that. I can't get enough of this stuff. I know there's tons of options out there, but this is one option. I just kind of like having them. I like having these official mini consoles, especially when we can hack them and add tons of other stuff. So yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Really do appreciate you guys. Are you still playing the PlayStation Classic? Is it still fun? It's one of my favorites and I'm still using it. Appreciate you guys.